Uh, Riley, can we please have a one-word noir-themed prompt? Ooh, hell yeah. Femme fatale. Ooh, wow. Smushed together as one word. I know what that means. Here we go. Three, <laughs> two, one. How dare you? I know things. <laughs> I, uh, Emily gifted me a... Uh, it's called Black Sad. I'm pointing to my comic book's shelf. It's a noir-themed comic book where the main detective is a cat and they're oh. animal characters. Uh, highly recommend it. There's a there's a good uh, feline cat femme fatale in that comic book. Ooh, that's cool. Hey, welcome to the Overtaken Podcast with your hosts, Ken and CJ. Say hi, CJ. Hi, CJ. This is the show where we talk over TV shows and movies as chosen by our guests. And this week, we watched Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Pew, pew. Zoom is cutting off your sound effects. We can't hear it. <laughs> Bummer. Real, real golden. It'll be in my track. Yeah. Those are some good pews, Ken. <laughs> Thank you. like you. I'm in church. Absolutely. Uh, and that voice you're hearing is returning us, Riley. It's been a while. Welcome back. Hi, Riley. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. It's uh, wonderful to be back. Uh, it's, been, it's, it's been a while, and um, oh, wow. I, I love doing this with you guys. Thanks for coming over. You're sitting right next to me, folks. Yes. I'm in CJ's wonderful home. Got a, got, a, got a great tour earlier. Got... I get to see CJ's really cool podcast set up here. Um, Thank you. No, you, you guys have really made the big leagues. Pretty, pretty impressed. I say that, I say that with, with this episode. Yeah, I say that with no sarcasm. By the way, really, <laughs> no, I am. Impressed. No, you're a genuine guy. We appreciate it. But we yeah, how, how, how have you guys been? This is uh, what episode three hundred plus, right? Three hundred and thirty-three. Oh hell tree, yeah! Tree, yeah. Tree, 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 tree. Yes. Oh, I love it. I got to, Riley, you and I, last time we hung out, was at Ken's wedding. I, I very much enjoyed uh, getting to sit next to you at the wedding and getting to chat. I know. Whoever set up that seating chart <laughs> yeah. uh, really did us Genius. solid. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was that was a wonderful wedding. I mean, three, you know, happy three-month anniversary, more or less, to you, Ken. And, Thank and, you. And Meg. Uh, no, that was that was wonderful. Like, going out, going, you know, heading out to the suburbs. Mm-hmm. It was beautiful late summer uh, evening. Yeah, gorgeous not, weather. Yeah, yeah, not too hot. It was beautiful. You know, we had there was like a terrace that we hung out at at night. Yeah. A lot of dancing. I sweated so much. Yeah, I sweated through my suit that night. A that lot same, of dancing. Same. <laughs> <laughs> so much that most of us had to take a break and just sit yeah, outside and recover. Everyone kind of died at the end, which I understood because I felt that way too. Although Meg kept it going, she kept dancing. She was yeah, she, she was did. a trooper. She's used to it. She stands up all day. That's I, true. I, I'm lazy. Yeah. I gotta. I sit half the day. No. I gotta sit yeah. down. Exactly. No, and, and all like the uh, the podcast like call outs like during the you know <laughs> yeah. the ceremony and like speeches and stuff. Yeah. And, like I, I, you guys were good sports about it as well. <laughs> but no, and uh, oh my god, the drink, uh, the drink of the wedding, the mojito, right? Ooh, um, yeah. Love. I love stole the... that from as Emily's drink from CJ's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was oh, well. I, I thought that was a burn notice call out. No, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, burn notice That's themed wedding. That's what it was. Yes, <laughs> Cameron was very happy with the with the yeah. You know, just <laughs> yeah. to see it there, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. I was jealous of your music box episode that I wasn't there for too. Got to hang out with two of my favorite people. It was a lot of fun, and yeah. and at the music box of horrors, that was a lot of fun too. It was a good time. I wish Riley, are you ever going to go to any of those? Uh, I went to not the music box of horrors, but I went to the Davis Theater um, twenty four hour oh, thing. Oh yeah, can. this was the, like five, the five years ago. Yeah, the massacre. Yeah, this was like yeah. five years ago now. Um, but that was, I mean, that was definitely the longest I've ever spent at a movie theater in, in one stretch. So of course it was with you. But uh, yeah, uh, no, I mean, good. yeah, in the future, I actually uh, just became a member of the music box. Uh, Hell earlier, yeah. earlier this year. So maybe maybe next maybe next fall. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we were members for a while, and then I moved away, and it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I would go if I could just like pop in for a movie or two, but I but they're only like half day or full twenty four hour passes, right? Yeah, but they're like thirty five bucks total, okay. so it doesn't. It's it's like it's I guess it's worth, worth it. it. To, yeah, yeah, two or three movies or something. Yeah, uh, next year. So can I? I guess I'm showing that I didn't listen to your guys' music box of horrors episode. What? But, uh, well, you know, just really quick, what were some highlights? What were some of the best things you saw? We saw a movie called The Convent that might have been my favorite thing. Ooh. It was. Uh, it opens with a woman walking into a church and just killing a bunch of nuns, and <laughs> oh. it was. 
we learned later that they were like demons, but Ooh, okay. uh, we didn't know that at the time, and it was a lot of fun to uh, to just so, open a movie that way. It was it was really fun. Is that is that um, movie just the response to like the Conjuring the Nun movies? Like yes. this time the nuns are on the other end. <laughs> like we're gonna fuck up some nuns. Like exactly. Time to get payback. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of other good ones. Trials play three play. That's always mm, fun. Nice. I love Chucky. Oh, Frailty. Have you ever seen Frailty? I've heard of it. I've never like seen it. Okay. Yeah, um, that's a good movie. Matthew yeah. McConaughey. Very nice. Um, Bill Paxton or Pullman. I always get them confused. <laughs> Especially since we watched Casper right after that. That had that's, the that's other Pullman one of those two. Sure. That's Pullman. That so is Paxton. I, I think Paxton's Frailty, <laughs> Pullman's yeah. Casper. That's it. <laughs> they programmed it specifically because of the Paxton-Pullman uh, duo. Uh, Riley, you'll it. know this. Who plays Casper? Oh, I actually don't know. Uh, it's, uh, the, I don't know live the little action boy. Casper or the voice of Casper. Live action Casper. I know. Do you want? Do you Ooh, want yeah. Live okay. Yeah. I thought you didn't know on the music when I was listening to the episode. It, it seemed like you guys didn't know who it was. Who is, I don't think we know who the voice is it, but we know oh, who plays God. live action. Yeah, yeah. It is Idle Hands. Is Devin Sawa. Yeah, Devin Sawa. Yeah. Yeah. What a pull. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or yeah. Final Destination or. The Chucky TV series. He's in a lot of stuff, but oh, is it? Oh, um, the Chucky TV series. I've heard really good things about that too. Oh, it is my favorite, like comedy horror series. It is so funny. It is nice. really, really good. Oh, excellent. Okay, Wh- where can I see that? Where can I? Oh, uh, well, that? you can check it out on Sci Fi or uh, USA, or okay. it's on Peacock as well. Oh, Peacock. Okay, yeah. I have Peacock. Excellent. Okay, Ken, have you heard of uh, Totally Killer? It's a new. I watched that in October. Yes. You did. How'd you like yeah. it? It's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. bad. It's it's a it's a run of the mill horror comedy that's not really horror at all. Okay. You would you would you could definitely watch it, and I think you would enjoy it. Yeah, one of my um, favorite uh, comedy writers, Jen D'Angelo, wrote it, and so I was wondering oh, nice. if, if you liked it or not. Is that the yeah, one with it's good. Uh, Kiernan it's, it's... Shipka uh, from Mad Men? And yes, yes, yep. uh, uh, Sabrina. Yeah, Sab- yeah, Sabrina. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I might very, check that out then. Very that's good television. Enough. Yeah, it's not not great. We fell off of it. <laughs> Ken, when do the when do the Halloween decorations come down in your household? Ooh, yeah, I see, they're, I see they're down <laughs> except for right behind me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like, we are I mid November. Taken this down yet? No, and, they're, and also they're down ar- everywhere else, and also in and around your heart. Those ne- those are evergreen. Those yeah, those are, uh, right. there's always the cobwebs in and yeah. around my heart. The doctors <laughs> are having trouble figuring out why. But... You know, you know what's something that can always fix any malady? Well, a little kiss. And then yeah. and little, and little kiss. Guess doing the segues. And maybe a little thank bang you. bang. You know, I was trying to think of one that wasn't like gross. So <laughs> thank you for doing it. Segway. Uh, oh, yeah. We're going to talk about Kiss Kiss Bang Bang coming up on the Over Talking Podcast. <laughs> Harry was a small time crook. Oh boy. Till he opened the door to a really big break. Give me Gabe Perry on the phone. But he'll need a real cop. Detective lessons tomorrow for your acting. Oh, are you the uh, consultant? If he wants to act the part. You must be Gay Perry. Still gay? Me? No. I just like the name so much. I can't get rid of it. And we're back on the Over Talking Podcast, joined once again by returning guest Riley. And we're talking about uh, Smooch Smooch uh, Pew Pew. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. <laughs> Riley, we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock for you to describe what Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is all about for someone who has not yet seen it. Ready to go. Yeah, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's a 2005 uh, noir comedy, uh, you know, crime thriller comedy. It's with uh, Robert Downey Jr., Val Kilmer, uh, as like two like kind of PI, you know, private investigators, kind of fuck ups, like you know, stumbling upon this mystery in L.A. Um, you know, uh, very much Ten uh, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> references and and is a take on you know Raymond Chandler Five, crime novels four, and very very three, funny movie directed by Shane two, Black and. One. Uh, yeah, a, 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 Time. a favorite of mine. And hilarity ensues. And hilarity ensues. Hilarity ensues, yeah. <laughs> Why did you choose uh, this movie, Riley? Well, guys, happy belated noir vember. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Uh, so, yeah, uh, so, obviously, Hall- you know, October is reserved for scary, scary stories, Halloween movies, and November, I think, is the perfect time for celebrating noir movies. But I think it's also the perfect time to celebrate the lighter side of noir movies like this one. I mean, uh, yeah. there, there is a lot of blood and, and gross stuff and, you know, like violence and stuff in this one. But like, it's, it's a very uh, sarcastic and funny movie. 
Uh, and also, like most Shane Black written and directed movies, is a backdoor Christmas movie. So, haha, I started <laughs> you guys out with Christmas way too early. So, twofold is, right. is really why it was why I chose this movie. It's also I it's about. it's uh, no, I, I I love it. It's um, you know, as we'll probably discuss, like you know, is the start of Robert Downey Jr.'s like comeback. You know, in like the mid two thousands before he became gotcha. Iron Man and you know skyrocketed to being the biggest star in the world again, but. No, it's just uh, just a really like I to me a very like well written, very well conceived, and um, just fun fun movie. Yes, I think yeah. I definitely agree with the word fun. It's mm. a good time. Yeah, it's a good time. It's very uh, self aware. Mm-hmm. Yes, like literally speaks directly <laughs> to the audience at yeah. many points. It's, yeah, it's great having Robbie Downey, Robert Downey Jr. as the narrator. I don't know. It's a, Talk, it's a yeah fun, talking directly fun to you, breaking the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. Yes. Being Fun shenanigans. The, the charming asshole, but in an R-rated version that he, you know, got to be for you know ten or so years. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like the the prototype, and uh, I, you know, he really gets to to shine and, uh, like, like I said, show that charm. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. While also being I, kind of a dick bag. In that's this movie. yeah. I think that's kind of it. That comes <laughs> yeah, with it. That's that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize the significance of this movie that this was really the movie that got him back into like a lister territory. Mm-hmm. I did not know that either. Yeah. Yeah, it it was a rough late nineties, early two thousands for him. Uh and uh yeah, as like, you know, I was I was a kid back then, so like, you know, I wasn't exactly like reading the tabloids, you know, uh on his, you know, stints in and out of rehab and jail and stuff. Uh but like, you know, I, I liked him as an at like he was like one of my favorite actors as a kid and like he disappeared for a while and I was like, Oh, where'd that guy go? Huh. Uh but then yeah, he, he uh uh you know, he pops up in uh like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, like Zodiac, and like a, a couple other like really good movies in the 2000s, and then you know Iron Man's the the the, the big big break, and yeah. you know being a third I was like a 13 year old when Iron Man came out, so like that was the biggest movie to me. And Robert Downey Jr. was like, oh, he's mm-hmm. the best guy ever again. This is amazing. Right. Um, and then like later in high school, like you know, finally being able to watch like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, like an R-rated movie. Pretty sure my parents were like out of town, and I was like, oh nice, I can watch this. <laughs> Sneaky, <laughs> this this adult noir <laughs> film, amazing. Uh, but no, it, uh, I I it was like one of my favorites, like as like a you know teenager, like young adult for sure, because like like you guys mentioned, like the breaking the fourth wall, like the very self aware, yeah. self referential, sarcastic humor. Uh, I I will say on rewatch as a thirty year old person, um, you know it's a little like it's a little annoying in terms of like the whole like. Here's where you know you don't want to know the story, but I'm the narrator, so I'm telling it. You know that kind of stuff. Like, it's, yeah, some of it's a little like it's a little annoying, but like I think it still like very much stands up as like very original and like very much has its like own voice. I got whiplash a couple of times from yeah. the it, like, well, maybe we're not going to talk about this, or you know what, it's my movie. Let's let's do this or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, all right, fine. I'm just getting confused at this point, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, but still a lot of fun and very funny. Like. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots lots of jokes but also very gory yeah like people getting killed right in front of you fingers getting chopped off yeah. it's uh <laughs> and sewn back on and sewn and back then, on and then ripped off again <laughs> <laughs> and then ending up in you know maybe an animal stomach yeah mm-hmm. yeah as as one's finger tends to do yeah but no, I no. This mo- I thought this movie is really funny, and like we talked a lot about, we talked about Robert Downey Jr. and he's he's great in this. Gets to play like a very you know charming asshole. But I thought Val Kilmer is also like really really funny in this. And yeah, I, I totally. almost wish because you know he's another guy who like kind of had like a a lull in his career in like the two thousands, and I feel like this also kind of brought him back a little bit. Like mm-hmm. you know he had Top Gun and Batman Forever, and yeah, he he gets to just be like the most sarcastic like asshole PI who's like also just really funny. And also, like you know, we can also talk about like the mid two thousands portrayal of a of a gay character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when I was doing trivia eh. for this, it said that, and I don't know how true this is, but this is like the first big Hollywood openly gay leading character, or one of uh, one of the leading characters mm-hmm. in in mm-hmm. a major Hollywood movie. Which I was trying to think of any anything else, and I couldn't, but. Um, and yeah, they, kind, of, kind of interesting. Yeah, they really won't let you forget it, too. <laughs> oh, they re- no. They refer well, to him as Gay Perry. <laughs> right, he's Gay gay Perry through the whole thing. Yeah. If you, if you, had, a counter, if you had a counter, you would probably oh, get to God, like 30 yeah. or 40 like, jokes just about him being yeah. gay and, like, yeah. and all that stuff. 
and some of them, like, you know, some of them are funny. Like, some of them aren't just targeted at him. Like, you know, he gets to make jokes and, like, he yeah. gets to, like, you know, like, in, like, a torture scene, like, he gets to, like, turn the tables on someone by, like, uh, like, uh, because they're a homophobe and, like, they don't, like, you know, check him all the way. Like, they're, they're you know, there are some points where it matters and, like, it, it actually, like, works. But also, like, there's just a lot of times where they're just, like, throwing gay jokes at the yeah. wall. Yeah. Like yeah, and you know, adding. none of it's like horribly problematic or anything, but it, it's also just like really beating you over the head yeah. with it. Like, oh, got yeah, tired this, of this it. One, this guy's gay. Like, yeah. and it's, it's like, kind like, of yeah. a joke. I guess. We know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't love the part where cops are like they're in an alley. Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer, and cops drive by, and so Val Kilmer is like, "Kiss me," and they start making out so that the cops yeah. just kind of leave them alone. Mm-hmm. And then Robert Downey Jr.'s reaction is like he's like spitting profuse, like yeah. oh gross, oh my god, oh. it's like Jesus, dude, I, relax. It, like Ace Ventura level stuff, like yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, he kissed you, well, <laughs> big, big deal. <laughs> you know, that was another moment that where the the narration I feel like kind of became a cop out because later on the the love interest shows up and mm-hmm. he, he then just cuts to them in the car and he's like, yeah, so. Uh, I convinced her that I wasn't actually gay, and we won't go into details about how I did that. Yeah. Just like, you, oh, okay. Just well, it. whatever. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They could have cut out a lot of those jokes, and I I think the movie would have been fine. They're not really, it like, adding much bad, or, like... From it. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the funniest jokes in the movie, to me at least, were, like, like Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer, great chemistry together, like... Mm. like Val, like most of the most of the movie, like Val Kilmer is just like shitting on Robert Downey Jr. because like he's kind of an idiot and he's like kind of a fuck up. But like most of them, like for the movie, like the running joke is like, you know, who who taught you who taught you English? Who taught you math? Like he Robert Downey Jr. is right. like fucking up yeah. all the time. Those are the funniest things. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the good stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the good stuff, and that's the stuff like. So like I mentioned, that Shane Black like wrote and directed this movie. It was his first directed movie. Uh, he also made the Nice Guys uh, with Ryan Gosling, oh, Russell nice. Crowe, which okay. I know you guys have talked right. about. And like, yeah, very, very, just the exact same vein of like Similar two vibe. private eye kind of guys who hate each other but kind of or love each other, and like they mess around and like solve a mystery in L.A. Like that—that's very much his vein, and uh, like this is also the kind of the prototype for that too. Um, but uh, well, yeah, did did you guys? It makes sense now, I guess. Like yeah. same guy. I, yeah. It, oh, absolutely. The relationship to me felt very like. Abbott and Costello or like Three Stooges where Val Kilmer is Mo and Robert Downey Jr. is like Larry or someone where he's like the angry serious one like yeah. mm-hmm. being like stop being such a fuck up like, <laughs> like listen up I'm trying to help you you idiot oh he's de- you're right he's definitely Mo yeah I like that that plays well yeah we need a more yeah. nose pulling in this movie is what yeah. we're saying boink <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Just turn it straight up into a Three Stooges. But yeah, no, and so like there, yeah, the the, the gay stuff, you know, it's very two thousand five. Yeah. I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? I mean, yeah, they did yeah. their best. It was of the time, unfortunately. Yeah. Could uh, could have been a lot worse for the time. True, I feel could, like. yeah, it very much could have. <laughs> do you watch a lot of noir, Riley? I do. Yeah, I watch and uh, uh, read a lot of noir. Oh, uh, I'm in a I'm in a book club, and uh, every with five other guys, we each pick a book every month. Uh, and every five months, they have to sit through another mystery noir, <laughs> noir book for me. <laughs> like, I know, like, none of my friends are, like, really big into it like I am, but, like, sucks for them. <laughs> That's well, you think you're, you're slowly bringing them around, maybe, by making them read No, some no, they're always, like, no. the most, like, <laughs> mediocre, like, they're always just, like, the most mediocre reviews everyone has. Like, and, like, they're, like, the, the least interesting conversations Aww. because nobody, like, hates it, nobody loves it. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it, uh, and like um, no, I, I, I've 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 liked them like these books for a while, like Elmore Leonard, Raymond Chandler, um, who uh, who are you know two of the biggest names, a great like mystery genre. Uh, you know, I grew up, I've done, I talked about the show Monk on this show before. Like I grew yeah. up like watching mm-hmm. like those procedural detective shows, and yeah, noir is just like a little bit more adult and uh, you know less polished version of that. And uh, no, those stories always have. Uh, Always have you know screamed out to me. Have you, same with you guys. Like I feel like horror is like a little bit kind of like noir. Like is this like? Now that you say that, I yeah, it felt. I don't know if it was just that time or the age, but yeah, like in our household, we watched Monk, NCIS, Numbers, mm-hmm. like a lot of those like more detectivey psych. <laughs> that's oh, the psych, comedy yeah. like detective sure. one. 
So yeah, that that is true. I'm not. I didn't realize that until you mentioned it. Of like, oh yeah, we watched all of those mm -hmm. shows. Yeah, they're entertaining. Yeah, we did too. I don't know if I would necessarily categorize Psych as a noir, but <laughs> it's like detective. Uh, I guess it's yeah. A, yeah they're detective solving stuff. a mystery at the end of each episode. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I love mystery movies. I, I, I don't know specifically noir. I don't know if I seek out necessarily, although I do enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I feel like noir requires like even more attention than uh, a normal mystery movie would. I like, I feel like there's a lot more happening. Usually mm -hmm. there's like, they even mentioned this in the movie. There's usually like two different things going on at the same time, but they're actually related. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I, um, but I mean, that's not to say it's, it's bad at all. It's just, uh, it's just different and, and good in, in the way I think. Mm -hmm. I'm also more impressed that you read a book every month. <laughs> that's, yeah, that that's alone. impressive. <laughs> now, you. CJ, I know Emily is in a book club, right? Yes. Yeah. And you opted to not. Uh, Correct. Because <laughs> yes. okay. there's, I, I will not finish a book every month. Uh, I'm also right. balancing my time between one to two books at once and comic books. <laughs> so I'm very all over the place. That's better uh, than me. Every day. Yeah. I'm lucky if I make time to even read just a comic book. I'm usually just listening to podcasts and <laughs> if the mood strikes me an audio book, but that's uh that's about all I got uh, right. time for. How do you guys feel about just like, you know, just the uh activity of reading like it's if I do feel like it's just kind of it kind of goes away as you get older, like, you know, or or as technology pro progresses. Like, you know, we listen to podcasts now, we yeah. watch TV m more and more and like this isn't the, this isn't a very new idea, but you know, like oh, like back in the day, like we read like a book every week in school or whatever it was, book every month in school, uh, and like I have to make myself do that now. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, do you guys like? Are, are you becoming illiterate? Like, <laughs> I, I, I like how I feel. Like, I feel like I'm becoming more illiterate, like a little bit more. It's it's yeah. definitely yeah. I it's I'm reading either at night or in the morning, pretty much never during the day. Because mm -hmm. yeah, during the day I will watch a show or listen to a podcast mm -hmm. or tinker around with whatever. But yeah, I'm never like at 2 PM being like, I'm just going to sit and read for an hour anymore. And I definitely used to do that. And then, yeah. Yeah. For, for me, it's a preference thing too. Like I prefer TV and movies, hence the the podcast, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't really enjoy reading all that much. I, I okay. used to, I mean, I used to read Stephen King and, 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 you know, other good books, but I don't know. Yeah, I just uh, who, who I just feel like can? I need what to be happens? doing other things. Who hurt what you? happened? What happened to you? <laughs> what book hurt you? <laughs> just growing up, uh, focus has 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 waned a bit. But... The, hard, the hard knocks of Arlington Heights. <laughs> yeah, that's, hey, that's I, I, I experienced them too. Hey, yeah, that, that absolutely that could be it too. Like my attention span is definitely not what it used to be. I wonder if that plays yeah. into it too. Of like. But I, I, I like need to read in bed or else it's harder to fall asleep. It helps oh. kind of like, it's kind of like meditative in that then my mind is only focusing on one thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not like worrying about the next day or whatever. I feel like it sort of helps my anxiety a bit. Nice. And, and I feel that. Me. I'm the same way, but with TV in yeah, bed. I need, to, I need something that is someone else's life happening. <laughs> that not my own, yeah. Engrosses my mind that that is what I'm thinking about as I go to sleep. Yeah. Also, I mean, like we all read during the day during work. Like you know, it's yes. not it's not yeah. books, but it's right. you know, it's it's code, it's numbers, it's, it's articles, emails, and, yeah, and emails messages, and shit. And like, shit. Yeah. Ah. Okay. I feel like, I feel like I just found the very easy answer to this whole conversation. <laughs> just we that, had. yeah, we're doing it constantly <laughs> for work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Meg's the same way, right? She she bakes all day at work, and she mm -hmm. doesn't want to come home and, and bake more yeah. at home. So she doesn't really, really make anything at home. It's always mm -hmm. just, even though she likes doing it, mm -hmm. it's just that's what she does all day. And so that's yeah, kind of kind of get burnt out. Yeah, totally. Speaking of focus, though, I feel like my focus has gotten better a little lately. Actually, one of today's sponsors is Magic Mind, and we CJ, you and I have been drinking it for a little bit now. That's right. It's it's a it's a little like little shot of a drink that you're supposed to drink along with coffee in the morning. And we've been drinking it for a couple of days, and it's really helped my focus and productivity a lot. What about you, CJ? Yeah, I have been trying to like cut back on my coffee. I am a full-blown addict where I will get a headache if I don't have it by a certain time in the day, where it, I need it now to feel somewhat normal. 
And that's not good because that usually lasts in your system for like 12 hours. And then I have to cut Uh myself off, even if I'm still tired. Literally the other day I had my normal amount of coffee, which is too much. It's like 24 ounces of coffee. Then went and made an espresso shot because I was still feeling sluggish, which is not good. It's not healthy. Uh, Rude Awakening, also when I was recently in Europe, brag, that uh, they don't do that there. (laughs) They have like one shot of espresso. You don't just get like three mugs of coffee the the places that i was able to find like a pour over you get like one mugs worth that's it because they're like we don't do that here we, we're oh. normal and don't aren't like giant addicts like you yeah they just don't do big coffee um so magic mind has matcha instead which is a sort of a better less jittery uh caffeine that um lasts in your system longer it's more of like a slow release instead of coffee mm-hmm. that's more of just like a punch so it feels less jittery, helps you focus more. Um, and then that way, too, that coffee caffeine is not in my system when I'm then still like trying to go to bed later in the day. Yeah. And I, I've had matcha before, and I'm not usually a fan of it. Like it, It's usually got a specific taste. But this isn't just matcha. That's just one ingredient in, in this. Uh, there's also nootropics and, and a bunch of other things that really help with your mental energy, your focus, and it, even memory, too. It helps with a whole bunch of things in addition to your normal coffee that you would drink in the morning. And I'm not really much of a coffee drinker. I, I drink some in the morning, but I find if I drink too much, I get jittery. Right. And I, I'm just like really sensitive to it. But Magic Mind has been a lot better, for me at least, than just coffee because I can only drink a little bit of that. And I don't get the full benefits of coffee because I just get too jittery. Like, And I, I get anxiety almost from it. Yeah, uh, and Magic Mind has been a lot better for me getting the benefits of coffee, without getting the the full, awful parts of coffee. <laughs> you know, yeah, if that makes any sense. Totally. And for an addict like me, it, it can't you know replace my twenty four ounces of coffee. But you drink it alongside it, and then it helps. Then I don't need yeah. as much coffee to get through the day or to feel normal. Exactly. Well, listen, listeners to our show, uh, we've got a great. Uh, deal for you on Magic Mind. You can go to magicmind.com slash overtalking uh, and get up to 56% off of a subscription for the next 10 days from the time of this podcast's release. Uh, and then after that, it's 20% off uh, forever for one-time purchases and subscriptions. So definitely go check out magicmind.com slash O-V-E-R-T-A-L-K-I-N-G and use code overtalking 20 O-V-E-R-T-A-L-K-I-N-G-20. And hey, they have a 100% money back guarantee. No questions asked if you don't like it. But we did. So you should try it. Yeah, it tastes great. It did. Yeah, definitely check it 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 out. It legitimately tastes great. I I was pleasantly surprised by the taste. I I was skeptical, but it it, it, it tastes good. That's all I can say. So definitely, again, go to magicmind.com slash overtalking and use code overtalking20. To get 56% off your subscription today or 20% off after 10 days from now. And speaking of focus, it's time to focus on getting my butt whooped in trivia. Yeah, time to focus up, CJ. Because it's time for... Hey, did you do know that? That's right, for new listeners of the trivia portion of our show, which fits very well with today's sponsor, to see who knows the most about what we watched. CJ Riley, are you two ready? Ready. I'm, I'm ready, CJ. I think you're going to do great. I, I disagree, but thank you. <laughs> Here we go. First question about Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. As a show of support of RDJ's Robert Downey Jr.'s uh, recovery Thanks. from drugs and alcohol, which other actor in this movie chose not to drink during filming? Oh, Jean Claude, just to to like support him. Who's Jean Claude? Who's Jean Claude? Jean Claude. <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, what, movie. What that's what I was confusing about? him with. Just, the other guy. <laughs> uh. So that's just a load? Gay Perry. <laughs> okay. Gay. Val Kilmer? Val, Val Kilmer. Kilmer. Yeah. I, um, can I also say Val Kilmer? Yeah, yeah you can. And that's the correct answer. I think yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I changed mine to, uh, I'm going to change mine to JCVD. Yeah. RDJ and JCVD. I, yeah, maybe yeah. that was it. The initials, I was like, it's an initial guy, right? <laughs> JCVD, man, that, that sounds like a venereal disease, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> it has VD in it, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. It's the Jesus Christ venereal disease. <laughs> the Jesus Christ. It's so alarming 
That's what you say when you realize you Jesus have it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it burns so good, you have it to yell Jesus Christ. It burns like holy water. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like hell. <laughs> All right, next question. RDJ, Robert Downey Jr., considered his role Thank as you. Harry Lockhart as his calling card for playing what future role? Iron Man, right? I, I, I'm also going to say, yeah, it's Tony Stark Iron Man. That sounds about right. That's correct. Uh, yes. It inspired John Favreau to cast him after he saw him in this movie. Basically, either that or Doctor Doolittle from the <laughs> very bad Doctor Doolittle remake he made a few years ago. I don't think I saw so, that one. Yeah, I don't think one, that's one of the two. Yeah. One of the two doesn't seem quite like the same character. So that's a skip, huh? Not, not, not worth the watch. <laughs> I I also skipped it. I, oh, okay. I, <laughs> I'm I'm just trusting my eyes looking at the trailer. Fair. Yeah. All right, well, next question. Which of these was an earlier title for this film? And this is multiple choice. Yes. I, I love Ken's fake titles. <laughs> yeah. Was it A, Kiss Kiss? Was it B, Bang? <laughs> was it C, L-A-P-I? Or was it D, L-A Noir? We just can't escape these acronyms. <laughs> What do you think, CJ? I, L.A. Noir feels too on the nose, and then, but uh, also copyright infringement from like the video game, right? Isn't there a video game L.A. Noir? Oh, I'm not familiar. And then, uh, yeah, L.A. P.I. kind like that's not quite what it's about. It like kind of is. I I really don't know. You've stumped me. I'm, I'll go with Kiss Kiss, I guess. But that one that also seems weird to mm. name a movie that without the bang bang. At yeah. The <laughs> Uh, I'm going to okay. go bang. Bang is a correct answer. Woo! Yes. Is a correct answer? Is Yeah, very astute. That magic mind is kicking in. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, it's th- There's another correct answer in here, and it's not Kiss Kiss. Sorry, CJ. Is it LA, uh, LAPI then? It is LAPI, Darn. yes. Uh, yeah. uh, I thought LA Moore would have would have gotten one of you guys, but that's okay. It seemed too on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you, I mean, that was like a 50-50. I'm so, that sucks, man. You went with just the wrong... <laughs> I'm still in it. The wrong permutation of the title. It. All right. True or false, this is Shane's Shane Black's first directing role. You, nice Guys comes after. It does. I'm trying yeah. to remember what you were talking about. <laughs> I think I said this earlier. Is so true? Is this his first one? I'm going to go with true as well. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But yeah, Shane Black was like, a huge name in Hollywood since like the eighties. Like he wrote Lethal Weapon uh, oh. the original and like became. I think he had like the highest like um, paycheck for like selling a script in Hollywood at the time. Dang. Uh, and then like went on to write. You know, he was one of the co-stars in like Predator. Like he, you know, he was in Hollywood like writing movies like Last Boy mm-hmm. Scout and Long Kiss Goodnight. But then finally became uh, a director with this one. Yeah. Very random good news sharing too. The the SAG after strike is over. That's They've right. reached an agreement. Oh, that's right. Yeah, which is yeah. excellent. Ah, yeah. So uh, we're, we're out of the yeah, woods I'm, on this. I'm so glad yeah. they, they got what they they got all the protections they wanted. That's right. Yeah. And I just want to remind yeah. everybody again: the AMPTP at the start was like, no way that those demands are ridiculous. They held strong and got everything they asked for. So just want to throw that out there. They suck. <laughs> They're going to continue mm-hmm. to say, oh no. We, we, there's no way we can make that happen. And then they just hold out and get what they want. I mean, they're, they're going to have to fight them again in three years, but I yep. mean, it works. You know, it yeah. works. Yes, yeah. it works. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hopefully they learned a little, little lesson from this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question. As a thank you for casting him in this movie, RDJ pushed to get Shane Black involved in the MCU. What came of that? <laughs> Wait, RDJ, what? who's that? Yeah, you didn't clarify. Oh, sorry. RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank Iron you. Man. What came of that? A very vague what came of that? question. <laughs> Nothing, I'm guessing? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Shane Black wrote and directed the 2013 film Iron Man 3. <laughs> that is the 100% correct wow. answer. <laughs> <laughs> what came of that? I think what that's the first that? time you've ever asked that. It's a... Uh, yeah, the least leading question. <laughs> Still got it. Good job. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Iron Man three. Like you know, looking back, like I, 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 re- I like it. Still, like it has very much the Shane Black like 
voice feel to it, you know, irreverence mm. and and uh, f- you know, sense of fun, like you said earlier, CJ. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, some people didn't like it at the when it was released. Yeah, you were talking about Iron Man earlier. I was like, Jesus, has it been like two decades? It has but pretty much. Yeah. Man, <laughs> wow. But I remember, like you know, like reading, uh, you know, blogs and like you know, talking to other comic book fans at the time. They were all mad that uh, like Ben Kingsley was like not the mandarin they they you know did like the it was like the the the, the twist it was like yeah. he's just an actor and like the real mandarin's guy pierce i really mm-hmm. liked that twist even from the beginning i don't know if it's just because i was prone to you know liking shane black's movies and stuff but i will still continue to ride for iron man 3 i remember liking it mm-hmm. i remember liking it too. i think the iron mans are are some of the good ones as far as the yeah. whole mcu mm-hmm. i think For iron sure. man the original is still like the highest rated mcu movie they're kind of they're, they're yeah, still they're still on the decline. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're still making them, but yeah. Yeah. No, I, I See, like. Did you watch Loki yet? Uh, I really loved season one. I have not watched season two yet. I was waiting yeah. until it all came out so I can just like go, get through it all. Um, but I yeah, I really love season one. I love. I'm a sucker for any of the multiverse time travel type stuff. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Owen Wilson is is pretty great in it. Yeah, I'm a sucker for Owen yeah. Wilson. Yeah. I, have you guys? I mean, uh, I, you didn't strike me as like people who are like really into the MCU, like. But have oh, you, I, I am. Oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah. okay. Uh, great. Um, we're, have you guys we're close to caught up? But yeah. have you guys like fallen off like in the past few years? I as still well? consume all of it, but <laughs> that's not to say I enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I will catch up on the movies. I mm-hmm. am selective about the TV shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly Hawkeye and the Talking Dog. I, I skipped. <laughs> uh, I think. I think I've watched most everything else, though. Wait, which one had a talking dog? He's got a talk. Yeah, you know Hawkeye. Oh, wait, Hawkeye does? <laughs> is that just Jeremy Renner's dog from real life? From from what I can tell from the movie poster, that dog talks. <laughs> so that's, that's, an that's all I know. an ongoing bit of cats. <laughs> also, that shows, I think, only like four episodes. You're skipping like, that's like two hours worth of your time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thumbs up on that. Okay. Uh, well, well, it's Christmas. It's Christmas set too, right? Yeah, so maybe this year I'll I'll swing back around to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. the holidays are coming up. But that also not. sets up uh, a new show that's I forget coming out soon. Oh, or with, has uh, a Vincent Echo. Giafano, right? Uh, he's, Vincent D'Onofrio is back as the Kingpin. Oh, right? he is. But um, oh. there's a new show called Echo, which is a character from Hawkeye, mm-hmm. or you're introduced to that character in that show. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, probably not gonna watch things. We'll you should watch Loki if you haven't. Yeah, Loki's. Good. I will. I will. I've watched season one. I, okay, I will cool. watch season two eventually. Yeah. Did you like season one? I, I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's. I try to pick the ones that seem like they actually have any impact in the MCU. That's what I. That's what I try to do because I do watch the movies, so I want to know at least kind of what's going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Uh, but the the Hawkeye one did ha, does not yet to seem have any impact on anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It gave Haley Steinfeld a starring role in a, yeah, she was a, good a miniseries. It's, it's in a miniseries. It's yeah, a, it's important to me. She hasn't been in anything else yet. Has she? <laughs> not, not, yet so. not yet. <laughs> no, I I I have I've precipitously fallen off of the MCU. I choose which ones I watch based on which ones I think actually look like literally look good. Like yeah, like the ones that don't look like everyone was filmed like on a green screen apart, you know, countries apart and. Mm. Like right. the ones where, like Loki, like it, it feels like you know, Tom Hiddleston, Owen Wilson are like actually like in a set that's like really yeah. well designed and like it's got a direction behind it. Like that stuff, I still am very much down for. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's he's a, he's the agent of uh, chaos, he's the yeah. god of mischief. Who doesn't yeah. want to watch that? He's fun. Yeah, he's yeah. just a little guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's just a little guy causing trouble. Anyway, th- thanks for indulging that that MCU detour. We can get back no. to you. No, yeah. we're, we're always happy to talk about the MCU yeah. on this podcast. <laughs> Those are the comic books I read. Are yeah. all like Marvel comics. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm all Same into that. Same when I do. That's, that's it. Yeah. All right, next question. What Matrix star was the voice of the bear in that fake commercial in this movie? Oh, the, the Gennaro's beer commercial yes. that uh, uh, Michelle Monaghan was in? I know the answer Good to luck. this, so I'll, get you, I'll let you go first, CJ. <laughs> You know um, the answer to I this? Do, yeah. Wow. Of course. I'm ch- I I can't like play the commercial in my head, so this is a total guess and I'm going to say the actor that played Morpheus. Okay? So you're going to go with Lawrence Fishburne. Yes. CJ, you are 100% correct. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> you yes. are 100% correct. Holy shit. Okay, but I want to know <laughs> I want to know Riley, how did you know that? 
Does uh, he sound like IMDb. him? Because it doesn't sound like him in the movie. I don't, think. Uh, I don't know. I, I read I read it somewhere, and I know I just know that um, Lawrence Fishburne and Michelle Monaghan would go on to like be in Mission Impossible three together, and I was like, oh, that's fun. Because huh. like, she was in that commercial with the bear, and I was like, oh, hey, how about that? I mean, I'm not surprised. I, I, I literally, I just I read <laughs> it. I read it. I read it somewhere. That's all. Okay. All right. How are we looking on points? Riley is up six to four. Okay. I'll leave it up to you. Do you want this next question to be double or nothing to potentially tie it up or Riley? Yeah. Or not? Yeah. That sounds good. All yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Well, then to make this an even shot, uh, I'm going to need you both to text in your answer because the question is, what is the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter score in percentage just closest? For those who don't know, this is the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm having you all text in so you don't influence Ooh, each other. I don't know. It yeah. says Ken has notification silence. How am I going? How am I sure? I'll you're gonna... still see it. Okay. It's okay. okay. I have a podcast focus. I'm, I'm just making sure you know this is completely fair as well. <laughs> It'll get through. It'll get through. Uh, all right. I texted mine in. Okay. I'm gonna hit notify anyway. <laughs> Screw you, Ken. I, in your privacy. I, I got it already. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, what'd you go with? I went with 84. Ooh, I went with a very similar number. I went with seventy-eight. Okay, I was. I'm thinking it crossed a, a eighty at least. That's my train of thought. Ken, well, yeah, you were right. Ah! Uh, you actually tied it up, CJ. It's eighty-six percent. Hey, Ooh. nice. Yeah, six. All right, six six. All right, six, just six. need one more. Well, we're gonna do the same thing again. <laughs> Whoever gets closest gets the point. What is the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes? Mm. In percentage, just closest. All right, what'd you go with? 83. I went 87. Oh, that's pretty high. Well, one of you got it exactly right. Oh, shit. Yes. And that person was Riley. Congratulations. Oh, my God. Nice. Uh, well, hey, well done, CJ. That was Congratulations. That was great. <laughs> wow. Closer Nicely than done. I thought. Uh, I, I usually assume I'm going to get my butt whooped by Riley, but I was <laughs> no, that was close. That was, close. That was yeah. really close. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. Absolutely. Yeah. For I mean, Riley is literally, as we've said, human IMDb. So <laughs> yeah. CJ, I think the magic mind is working. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Well. Yeah, that's yes. right. If no, if, if that's not a, a real life testimonial, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. To almost <laughs> winning. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I think it might be time for our ratings then. All right, yeah, let's do it. Woo! Uh, yeah, right. uh, I'll, I'll go first if you guys want. Yeah, please. On a scale of one to ten, what would you rate Kiss Kiss Bang Bang for you? Uh, so it definitely it used to, this movie used to be a ten because like I just was wowed by just like how by the the self referential and the 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 breaking the fourth wall stuff like. I ate that shit up when I was, you know, a teenager and, and a young adult. Um, but like, I still very much like this movie. I think like great chemistry with the uh, with the two leads. Um, also, should be should worth mentioning. Uh, I uh, Michelle Monaghan, the the love the love interest in the movie. I think she's really great in this too. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, she actually uh, there. She's definitely a damsel at points in this movie, but she also gets to do stuff and like you know helps all like you know she's a a really fun character i thought too she so, helps like or, figure it out yeah. like she's the one that kind of puts the pieces together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like it, yeah and it you know one thing about like shane black movies like in the nice guys too like with uh, ryan gosling's like daughter helping out like you know actually helping to like solve the mystery and save the day like he does you know reserve at least some you know agency for like a side female character which is nice not amazing but you know it's it's nice it's nice to have in there um could be more yeah. Anyway, uh, I think yeah, I think the movie is still really fun. I think it really just has its own personality uh, and a lot of really good lines. I, uh, one of them that sticks out to me is like when Robert Downey Jr. is like complaining about all how all the women in L.A. are just crazy and messed up. He's like, it's like someone took the U- U.S. from the East Coast and like shook it, and all the normal girls like you know held on, like just like obviously Shane Black is like. Com- that's him complaining about LA, <laughs> but like he, he does it. He, he, he does find like these really great ways of like putting things. And I think he is like a, just a really good writer. So yeah. Uh, love the dialogue in this movie. I'm going to give it an eight uh, overall. Eight nice. overall. Very, very nice. fun. Movie. Uh, for me. Yeah. I, I definitely like this movie. I thought it was really funny. Um, yeah. Some of the dialogue and writing is, is really well done. 
there's a lot of great actors and actresses in it. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's an all around good movie. I think it gets in its way a little bit for for things that we've already talked about, like mm-hmm. Gay Perry and some of the narration. That detracted a, a little bit for me, but it was still really enjoyable. I love a good mystery. I got confused a little bit while I was watching it, <laughs> uh, but still really good. So for me, I'm gonna give it a seven though. It's a it's a it's a, it's a good movie. Nice. It's a good movie. Yeah. No, Ken, I think you're right. Like you were t- talking about, like the mysteries and the plots of these movies, like they're per- like they're purposely like convoluted and like of course, yeah, you know, multiple like you know, multiple daughters and like switching identities and stuff. Like they Mr. they X. always like throw yeah, Mister X. They always throw stuff in there, which is the point, right? Because yeah. they don't yeah. want you watching this and figuring it out because that's not fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> like you want to you want to be kept something. guessing the whole time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For me, I actually uh, just watched this on my own per Emily's recommendation earlier this year. No way. Um, so I went back and checked what I had rated it the first time, since that was more of a, a better representation of it than sort of knowing the twist and going into it another time. Sure. Um, so I will give this an eight as well. Nice. Wow, um, nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a, like I said, it's a fun movie. There's some gore. I'm glad, like, I don't know if it's just as an adult or as I get older or something like I tend to enjoy our movies more cause there's less like limits. Mm-hmm. Not saying that movies have to be like gory or swear all the time, but I just, I, I feel like they get to do more fun stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. than if you were limited by the, the censorship and stuff. Um, and yeah, I did appreciate towards the end where, uh, RDJ Robert Downey Jr. is addressing the audience <laughs> and says like, or, or no, uh, or they, they address that and say like, and for all of you in the Midwest, sorry, we swore so much. <laughs> I appreciated that. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy a fourth wall breaking sort of self-aware type stuff. I think this is just, yeah, it's an all around good time. Uh, CJ, what, uh, what, what was Emily's pitch to you about this movie? What did, what was her mini review? I don't remember. This was uh, several months ago, but yeah, I forget how it even came up, but she was like, oh, you haven't seen that. We should watch it. And mm-hmm. she was down to like watch it again and remembered enjoying it a lot. Um, Cause I think it, yeah, I think, I think she sold it as the sort of, it's a, a comedic mystery kind mm-hmm. of movie, which are always fun. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. If you've seen any of the Fletch series. No, I have. Uh, well, oh, uh, I've seen like the original Fletch with like uh, with Chevy Chase. Chase. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't seen the any of the sequels. I don't think like Fletch Returns or any of those. And I haven't seen the John Hamm one that came out like last year. Fletch, yeah, um, he, he's in Europe or something. I recommend the John Hamm one. Really, I, I okay. had a good time with it. Nice. I remember liking it a lot. Yeah, and then I, I didn't actually know there were any after the Chevy Chase one. It, it just came out like. This year or last year or something like that. It's it's fairly okay. new. Uh, Fletch confess, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I just, yeah. I think I even confess Fletch. Sorry. I may have watched the John Ham first and then went back and watched the original Chevy Chase one. Mm-hmm. Um, huh. Chevy Chase one's pretty good. I I remember liking the John Ham one though. If you're looking for another yeah noir type I, one, I think John Ham is a really good comedic actor. Totally. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. He uh, like his. I don't know if you guys watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, but yeah, uh, like him playing himself, but also like trying to play Larry David. Oh, that's <laughs> like yeah, becoming that's Larry really David, good. like yeah. one of the best uh, like guest starring roles on a TV show yeah. I've ever seen. He's great. Huh. Nice. Um, I-, I think it is good to like, you know, the-, the movies that are pretty seminal for you. You know, as like you're either growing up or like a young adult, like rewatching them as- when you're older. Is- is important uh and i've been trying to do like i've been trying to like keep track of stuff on litterbox more and more now too which i'm guessing nice. is what you yes like oh, look nice. back at yes um something i i also try to uh, have been trying to do more uh because yeah like you know your, your taste changes you get older like you just think about things differently um so maybe you know in the future i'll i'll, I'll, I'll do another one of these one of these reviews this does you. Nice. You've sold me on Shane Black, and now I want to like check out more of his stuff if I haven't seen. Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, no, very like it's all of it's very much like you know, very quick dialogue, like rapid fire, you know, insults and um, irreverence it. and things like that. Uh, Ken, I I just remembered we actually saw a Shane Black movie in theaters together. Uh, the one of the newer Predator movies. Um, oh, Prey. No, not Prey. Predator. The, Pred- the one before. There's... The one before it. Um, predators, I think, or predator. Predator it with was something like, simple. Yeah, 
or no, it was the predator, the predator, the predator. That's it. Um, yeah. Which I thought was actually kind of a misfire from Shane Black. I, I thought uh, that movie was kind of, kind of. Yeah, kind it was, of wasn't the best, but yeah, um, it's still a predator movie at least. So yeah. I, I enjoyed it in that respect. But yeah, you wouldn't be able to know that that was a, a Shane Black movie. I don't think. I mean, uh, yeah. Other than know. like, like the like the one character had Tourette's and he just said like crazy shit all the time. Like that was that was the biggest yeah. <laughs> Shane Blackism I would say. Okay. Uh, but no, uh, so Shane Black and Robert Downey Jr. I believe in the next few years are going to be making another movie together. It's going to be oh, another cool. probably comedic crime movie uh, based off the Parker novels, uh, the Parker, um, the Richard Stark Parker novels. So like they're very much like he's like a private eye or like a detective. So like, like Tony Stark's son? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> TSJ. <laughs> oh, that's good. RDJ and TSJ. That's uh, That's excellent. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, look, look out for more of that coming in the next few years, hopefully. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Well, Riley, thank you for joining us thank you. once again. This was a lot of fun. Do you have any words of wisdom or do you want to plug your letterbox at the end here? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, my letterbox name is, uh, ironic man six. Uh, <laughs> nice. I mean, I, uh, I don't uh, think the, I follow you. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to follow you. On uh, that. fits pretty perfectly or is it, oh, I think it's just ironic man actually. Wow. Pretty, that. pretty perfectly dovetails with uh, the subject of our movie today, uh, RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. Who? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I've been, I, I was really on it this summer. I've kind of fell, fallen off, but I'm, I try to rate things as much as I can. Uh, what, are you, what are your guys' letterbox handles? While, Great while question. While you it. can follow me on letterbox <laughs> at CJW. Riley, you gave Renfield a two out of five stars. Yeah, well, I regret following you. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, that's 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 about right. No, that's fine. That's that's fine. Ken, what's uh, your you very easy at, to uh, understand handle? Man, you know, is there a way to change it? Like, I really need to figure <laughs> that out. But it is currently at least K Drisk zero one. That's K D R I S C zero one. Don't K-Drisk. ask me what Drisk stands for, <laughs> or what the W for CJ stands for. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, and hey, speaking of following people, you can follow the show on all the social platforms at Over Talking Pod. We are on TikTok, Instagram, everything. Go give us a follow and some likes over on there. It makes us look good. You can email us at overtalkingpod at gmail.com. Or call or text the show at USACAT1591. Uh, oh, no, they're here. Uh, speaking of following, uh, they've been following me into this podcasting studio. Uh, it's the Overtalking Overlords. They are our guests, the otherworldly landlords, which, you know, that probably doesn't make any sense to you if this is the first episode you're listening to, but that's okay. Uh, they just are people that show up at the end of every episode to remind me to remind you, if you like the show, please go on Apple Podcasts and rate and review. Reviews are what help people find this podcast. Also, we spend enough money in advertising, so if you like the show, please tell a friend and spread the word. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you to Magic Mind for sponsoring this episode. Thank you. And they're gone. And as we say at the end of every single episode, bang, bang. Pew, pew. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> Bye. Bye. This episode of the Over Talking Podcast was produced by Ken and CJ. Edited by CJ. Special guest this week was Riley. Music by Justin Peters. Logo by Nate Richards. Check out Nate's work on Instagram at Nate Richards Designs.